Hey guys, Falcon here, and welcome to how to install Armour 2 DayZ. In this one I'll show you the method using DayZ Launcher. Uh, there probably are other methods, but they're fairly obsolete now, because DayZ Launcher is very easy to use, very simple, and quick to install. So, sorry about the mess on my desktop, usually it's actually messier than this, I've cleaned it up a bit. Uh, i got files all over it from schoolwork and such. Uh, at the end of this video I'll talk about, very quickly, about uh, why it's taken me so long to upload, but the beginning of this is the important part, which is what the title is. Okay, to start off, go onto your internet browser, whichever it may be, I use Google Chrome, search up Daisy Launcher, like so, in the search bar, and it should be the first thing that comes up, daisylauncher.com. So if you click on that, just check it's the right URL, I'll put the link to the, in the description, uh, just in case you can't find it, and select the download now button, the giant green one. Just wait for that to download. Once it's finished downloading, right click on it, select show in folder, or browse to your downloads folder, uh, which should come up in the drop down menu, and your file explorer. And once you find it, double click on it, select yes, and go through the options, selecting what you want. Uh, the default options, I'd suggest keeping them, because they are quite useful. It's a pretty easy wizard to go through, uh, it shouldn't take you too long, just go through it, select next. I'd suggest creating a desktop shortcut, and then maybe even putting it on your taskbar, so that you can quickly access it. Once it's installed, select finish, and it should be installed on your desktop. Now before you can actually use Daisy Launcher, make sure you have bought and installed Armour 2 and Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead. Now this is important, remember to install Armour 2 first. This is the most important thing. Once you've installed Armour 2, go into the game and go at least into the main menu so it finishes the installation process. And then download Armour 2 Operation Arrowhead and do the same. Once you've done that, you should be good for the next step. Ignore these other Armour 2 files, these are extra files or DLC. You don't need them. So you're done with that, go back into your Daisy Launcher, which I have on my taskbar as seen there, down at the bottom. Always allow administrative access, because it needs it to mess with certain files to actually install mods. I've used this application for about two years, or maybe even more, so I can guarantee that it's not going to give you viruses or anything, it's a perfectly legit application. So now that you're in here, probably overwhelmed by all the different servers and everything, uh, but what you want to start off with is go to the settings tab, and make sure that your mod slash download path is somewhere where you want it. Right now, it's not where I want it. If you're not sure that the correct folder is selected, press the Open Mod Folder button and check if it is. This is actually where some of my Armor 3 mods are downloaded to, so that's not correct. To change this, select the Browse button beside the Mod Slash Download Path and choose the directory where you want your mods to be installed. I personally, this is just personal choice, you can do whatever you want, I personally put it at, inside my actual Armor 2 Operation Arrowhead folder since that's where my mods have been installed since I played Daisy, which is there. As you can see, there's all my mods. Some of them I've installed manually for cinematics or whatever, so don't worry if you don't have this many mods installed. The other thing is to make sure that your Armour 2 path is correct. It's, it's pretty simple, just find out where you've installed your Armour 2. If you have Steam, it should be about the same. It's usually located within your C drive, inside the program files times 86, or whatever it may be called for your device. The Armour 2 profile is not really that important, especially if you're first logging in. It, I simply have a profile which has changed config files, so I select that. And make sure that if you want to be able to chat on Steam with people, select the Launch Daisy mod on Steam. I don't know what that other experimental option is, but you don't need it. You can use it if you want, but I've never used it before. So now, go into your mods folder and install whichever mods you want. You can see that some of the mods on this list have verify, delete, or folder on them. This means I've already installed them. The one at the top is Vanilla DayZ, the one highlighted in red. It's been corrupted because I haven't, I haven't updated in a very long time. So if you want to download a mod, simply select the download button and it'll download it for you. Once it's finished downloading, you should install it immediately and automatically apply it to whatever server you go onto. Depending on whether that or not that server actually uses that mod. This is the part where you find what server you want to play on. You can use the search bar up here to find the name of the server itself. Uh, this is the name of the server where I build in for Origins. 
and if you select the star on the left of the server it highlights it blue and adds it as a favorite which you can sort by on the list right here so if you put it so the arrow is facing down it means that your favorites will be at the top as always these extra options on the side are for adding a filter which will change which servers come up these are the options i suggest using because it means that if your favorite server is full of players then you'll still be able to see it or if it's empty you'll still be able to see it and some servers may not have info and they still might be perfectly good to play on you can also list by other things such as ping which is one thing that i suggest to do especially when you're starting off and looking for a good server to play on as you can see it lists it from the lowest ping at the top going down until it gets higher and higher the lower the ping the better you can also search by mod if you select Origins mod, it'll bring up the official Origins mod servers, which will have that mod installed. You can also filter by which map the server has installed. Most of the time I'll play on Chinaris or Taviana, like here. If you click apply, it'll apply the filter, and you can see which ones are there. Clicking the refresh button refreshes every server in the list, and can take a bit longer. If you hover your mouse over the icon to the right of the server listing name, you can refresh that server in particular, check the player list, and if you select the play button on it, you can go into game. And that's how you go in. It's worth noting that usually there'll be a download button there instead of a play button if you don't have the required mods to go on that server. If you select the download button, it'll download the mods for you, and you won't have to select manually which mods you want. Alright, so now onto the part of the video where I explain why I'm not uploading very much right now. Basically, it's a very simple reason, I don't have much time right now. I am at the very end of my last year at high school, uh, and I have a couple of boards that I need to do, and they take up a lot of time. A lot of time. Literally, I spend about five hours a day on them, uh, to give you an idea of how much work I have to put in. So I don't have much time for uh, anything else, really. Every now and then I take a break and watch an episode of a TV show, like The New Westworld, which is great, by the way. I'd suggest watching it, and uh, the new Walking Dead episode, which just came out. <coughs> no spoilers, sorry. Uh, and <laughs> uh, and so I, I just don't have enough time at the moment. Uh, but in a couple weeks, I'll hopefully be able to start uploading a bit more consistently. Uh, the next video will probably be an Armour 3 episode, and the one after that, I'll, I'll try to get an Origins one out. The Origins episodes take a lot of time because uh, th I have a lot of raw footage on them because I record everything so I have a lot of like three to four hour long files and I have to sift through them looking for footage that's actually useful and I have a lot of them because it takes a long time to do anything in Origins so yeah that, it takes a lot longer to edit an Origins episode but I'll get an Armour 3 episode out as soon as I can uh, and once I've done that I can pretty much guarantee that I'll get a video out at least once every week and a bit, maybe two weeks, because I have a social life, and I'll probably have a job throughout the summer. I don't really get paid for this because it's more of a hobby than anything else, but I'll probably get a new microphone soon, looking at a Blue Yeti. <laughs> I'll leave it with you, I'm, I've am i been using a cheap headset microphone this whole time, but nobody even really would notice because the quality of it is ridiculous. I didn't think that a headset microphone would actually sound this good. To blow your mind, to give you an idea of how good the microphone is, uh, this is barely edited audio. I just removed noise in the background and it's from a $40 headset. That's $40 New Zealand so that's maybe 30-ish uh, US dollars. It's, not, it's super cheap and super great. But anyway, <laughs> I sort of went off track there a little bit at the end. Uh, but to finish off the video, I'd like to say thanks for Everyone who subscribed recently, 770 subscribers is it now? That's pretty crazy. <laughs> like I do this as a hobby, I don't, I'm not really expecting this channel to get bigger or anything. I'm just having fun editing videos for now. So anyway, I'll see you guys out there. Bye.